Test, 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 okay. Um, so these are three separate state machines. Zookeeper, etcsd, and Council are the most widely used in distributed databases today. Bitcoin, of course, is a distributed database at its core. It's programmable money, but of course, you can't really build applications on top of it. Ethereum introduced the novelty of smart contracts, which introduced the idea of building dApps. All these three, all these three things have what they what they have in common is that they're not your state machine. You're limited to their rules, and to build outside of it, you either have to fork the code base or hope that someone else has done it already. In Tendermint, we decided to do it a bit differently. We decided to to separate the application from the consensus and networking, and uh, through this interface called uh, ABCI. This allows state machines to be built in any language, but also state machines to not have to adhere to the rules of state machines that are not your own. In this case, um, one of the most prominent frameworks built on Tendermint using, this, using the ABCI is Cosmos, um, the Cosmos SDK, which is a set of modules built um, for staking and to use within hubs and zones. Of course, um, there's other applications built on top of it, uh, and the, one of the biggest ones right now is um, Crypto.com's application, and they actually built the application in Rust. So here you can see a, a overview of the Tendermint stack. Here, usually, um, you ha the, with the Cosmos SDK, you have in process with Tendermint Core, and so it's communicating through a socket protocol. And then you also can communicate via, via gRPC, which in some cases has been known. Um, but it, of course, leads to a slower um, state machine. And then we have KSMs and, of course, easy to use REST clients. Now the Cosmos Voyager doesn't exist anymore. It has forked into Looney. Also, if you have any questions while I'm talking, just raise your hand and just, or just yell them out. So the ABCI ecosystem today is very wide. Um, the ones that we support and maintain are the Rust and the Go ones. Of course, the other ones um, have been supported by the community and built by the community. Uh, some of the applications today, like Foam, Foam is actually building out a Cosmos SDK implementation in Haskell. So they are the maintainers of the Haskell ABCI. But VMs are kind of nice. Smart contract languages are easy to use for, uh, for developers. It's a lower onboarding. And, but like um, when you're building modules, you're, of course, not able to do it. And so we wanted to enable users to build VMs on top of Tendermint. And so some of the, one of the most prominent VMs coming to Tendermint at the end of this month is going to be Ethermint. And Ethermint is basically just the EVM as a module within the SDK to just for, to bring over your Solidity code onto a Tendermint-based chain. And of course, uh, when, when Ethermint launches, IBC and PEG zones will be available for people to use to communicate with the Ethereum chain. Some people who have already done this um, are Matic and Loom, and they both have EVM-compatible um, VMs on top of their tenement based chain. So of course, we're now building a lot more chains. It's not one chain to rule them all. Now we have many chains. And what the biggest problem that comes there is the interoperability between chains. Um, and so Chris Goes has spent the last four to five months building a 70 page spec for IBC. And the novelty of IBC is that two chains that don't know about each other can actually start communicating without having to pre-program code to communicate with them. This enables chains who, um, of course, Bitcoin and Ethereum, who don't know about each other, can communicate. And then this is also, um, if you're building a Cosmos-based chain, that this will come out of the box and ready to go from day one. ETH 2.0 is also looking at it for their sharding design and also for their communication through other chains. And Substrate as well is also looking at using it for substrate to substrate based communication. So now a quick wrap up with the Cosmos SDK. 
So the Cosmos SDK is a set of modules to be built to build a blockchain. Now they're all interchangeable, even the core one, uh, which is Tendermint. And like I touched on earlier, it has um, one block finality. And in the most recent test nets, we've had 170 to 200 plus validators. And right now, we are working on furthering the formal verification within Tendermint. The Tendermint consensus has already been formally verified, but not the protocol. And then the, one of the coolest things within the Cosmos SDK is that you can actually swap out Tendermint's, um, Tendermint, the module of Tendermint, for other consensus networking layers. Um, one that comes to mind is Honey Badger, but another one that you could easily do with some tinkering is you could actually switch out Tendermint for Libra. Libra follows uh, same, some of the same philosophy behind the ABCI, and so you could actually run a Cosmos SDK based chain on top of Libra's consensus and networking. So the, like I touched on earlier, the EVM is just a module within uh, the, the SDK meaning that you can build out however you want. And the cool part about this as a use case for some Ethereum-based chains is that they can move over their entire Solidity code base without having to rewrite anything and then slowly rewrite stuff into the modules. IrisNet is another hub that is within the Cosmos ecosystem. And they're based out of China. And their main thing is microservice, kind of a business as a service. And they are actually working on connecting to Binance right now through IBC to communicate um, and enable trading with Binance. The hub and spoke model, of course, uh, comes, with the, comes with the Cosmos ecosystem because you don't want to connect each chain to each chain directly. The amount of um, ports that you'll have to allocate will be exponential. And so this is where the hub design comes in. And of course, currently IrisNet and the Cosmos Hub are the two main hubs, actually the two hubs that are named, that have hub in the name because Binance can be considered a hub and Loom can also be considered a hub. So currently the ecosystem has over $5 billion in collective market cap. Some of the notable mentions on the Tendermint side is um, Hyperledger. And of course, uh, at today's conference, there are, I believe, four uh, four protocols building on Tendermint, um, which is Cosmos, Agoric, Hyperledger Burrow, and um, Foam. And this is kind of an ongoing and ever-growing list. We're seeing new people come on and people that haven't told us that they're using this software. Of course, that's what we're all here for, open source software and enabling others to use it. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. <laughs> Hopefully you guys have questions. Um, so it matters what, what you're building an application for. So if you want to use the Cosmos SDK right now, there are, um, I wouldn't say some limitations, but there are some rules to adhere to which um, in the coming months we're working on taking out and enabling the user to do just about anything. Um, and that's something that's, um, that's something that we're working towards. Now, in the case of if you're a Rust house or let's say you want to build in Java or some other language, then of course there are ABCIs to support it and you would most likely end up building your own application layer, just like Crypto.com, Kadena, and Hyperledge. Yeah, currently, um, I believe on this slide, um, right down there, there's Cosmwasm, and this will be Rust-based smart contracts um, that the work started back at the Berlin Hack Atom Hackathon, and it's, it's picking up again, uh, I believe it picked up last week, and so hopefully knowing the developer behind it, I can see it happening in within the next two to three weeks that Cosmwasm is launched on the Cosmos, uh, as a module in the Cosmos SDK. More questions? Yeah, so the so, so the idea that of Ethermint, um, 
within the Cosmos ecosystem, at least how I envision it, is there won't be one chain that runs Ethermint. Um, Ethermint is an alternative to Ethereum, um, just like POA network and some of these um, EVM-based uh, blockchains. Um, the only thing here is that you can get away from solidity. So um, in the case of Aragon and this Aragon chain that got recently announced, the idea there was that they can move their solidity contracts over and so in their case, Ethermint will most likely be just for them, um, just for the Aragon chain. And then if someone else wants to launch a Ethermint chain for the ecosystem, then of course the security model will come into question. But to date, we haven't um, found a need to launch a VM-based um, chain. Yeah. Yeah, um, the same thing with uh, Peggy. Um, Peggy is the Ethereum peg zone. And in that case, uh, many people will end up using a, the official peg zone of the Cosmos ecosystem when one launches. Um, of course, we don't know when that will be, but then they will also, uh, you also enabled to kind of build your own peg zone and customize it for yourself by using that code base to your needs. No more. You got more, you got more questions? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for coming. Hopefully you learned something new. <laughs>